Welcome again. Welcome to God's house for this marvelous celebration. Can we please stand? Welcome again. We have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Yat Ting and Joanna, to ask his blessing on them and to share in their joy. Our Lord Jesus Christ was himself a guest at a wedding in Cana of Galilee and through his spirit, he is with us now. The Bible teaches us that marriage is a gift of God in creation and a means of his grace, a holy mystery in which man and woman become one flesh. It is God's purpose that as husband and wife give themselves to each other in love, throughout their lives they shall be united in that love as Christ is united with his church. Marriage is given that husband and wife may comfort and help each other, living faithfully together in need and in plenty, in sorrow and in joy. It is given that with delight and tenderness, they may know each other in love and through the joy of their bodily union, may strengthen the union of their hearts and lives. It is given as the foundation of family life, in which children may be born and nurtured in accordance with God's will, to his praise and glory. In marriage, husband and wife belong to one another, and they begin a new life together in their community. It is a way of life that all should honour. And it must not be taken carelessly, lightly or selfishly, but reverently, responsibly, and after serious thought. This is the way of life, created and hallowed by God, that Yat Ting and Joanna are now to begin. They will each give their consent to the other. They will join hands 
and exchange solemn vows. And in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. Therefore, on this their wedding day, we pray with them that, strengthened and guided by God, they may fulfill his promise for the whole of their earthly lives together. And now the collect for this service. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessing upon Yat Ting and Joanna, that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to the boy band. Go ahead. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. That was beautiful. If you'd like to take a seat, thank you. The first thing I need to ask is if anyone present knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry, please declare it now. So, Joanna and Ting, the vows you're about to take are to be made in the presence of God. He is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. So, Yatting, will you take Joanna Tan Henri to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and cherish her, protect her and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Joanna Tan Henri, will you take Yat Ting Kwan to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honor, obey, and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. To the congregation, will you, the families and friends of Yat Ting and Joanna, support and uphold them in their marriage now and in the years to come? We will. Wonderful. Who brings this woman to be married to this man? I take Joanna's hand as a representative of God. Yat Ting and Joanna, I now invite you to join hands and make your vows in the presence of God and his people. So to Yat Ting, repeat after me. I, Yat Ting. I, Yat Ting. Take you, Joanna. Take you, Joanna. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. To death till, do us till part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Joanna. I, Joanna. I, Joanna. Take you, Yat Ting. Take you, Yat Ting. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for, po for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. To death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Now I take the rings. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings, if they can stay on my book, be to Yat Ting and Joanna a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenant 
which they have made this day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we all say, Amen. So, Yating, take Joanna by the left hand. So now you say to Joanna, Joanna, Joanna I, give you this ring I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, With my body I, honor I honor you. All that I am, all that I, am I, give to you. I give to you. All that I have, all that I, have I, share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God, Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Wonderful. Now you say to Yat Ting, Yat Ting, Yat Ting, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honor you. With my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Yat Ting and Joanna have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. Those whom God has joined, let no one break apart. And now's the good bit. You can kiss the bride. <laughs> I don't know who's blushing most. <laughs> Follow me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Yat Ting and Joanna in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, awake and asleep, in joy and in sorrow, in life and in death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we all say, Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat.
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, good. Oh, 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 when the night is cold. Philippians 4.4 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts with your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Colossians 3, verse 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And all, over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you are called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell amongst you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. And these are the Lord's words. Stumble 
guys. Thank you. I can see the X Factor beckons. The first thing I'd like to do is to say a huge congratulations. And I think we should all put our hands together again to um, <laughs> congratulate the lovely couple. Well done. Well done. So why are we here? Why are we here? We know it's something to do with love. We can see that in the readings. In Colossians it says, and over all these virtues put on love. So today, love is the most important point. It's more lovely than the bridesmaids' dresses, although they do look lovely. It's more important than the first dance or the Kaylee later, although we're all looking forward to it. It's more important than the witty speeches, the food, the cupcakes, the food trucks, or the sparkler send-off. We may want to agree that love is important, but what is love? Real love. A famous theologian once said, I want to know what love is. I know you can show me. Or perhaps that was a mullet-wearing 1980s rock band called Foreigner, not quite sure. The wisdom of the passages you picked today is that they explain what love is. And I'm going to try and explain those using three gifts. It's a bizarre selection of gifts, and they're gifts that I will open for you. You'll have lots of gifts to open later. And I do hope that other people haven't given you these gifts for lots of reasons. I've, got, I've actually got a glamorous assistant who's going to help by providing the gifts. The first gift, please, my glamorous assistant. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so the first gift, well, this looks really exciting. What, what could it be? Is it diamonds? Is it gold? Frankincense or myrrh? Um, no, it's a tea towel. A tea towel. So apologies to anyone else who's bought Yat Ting and Joanna a tea towel, or perhaps you should be apologizing to them if you bought them a tea towel. So is this to clean up after all those great meals that you cook together? My wife Vanessa and I um, were really um, honored to have a meal with Yat Ting and Joanna. They're fabulous cooking, they're amazing hospitality, they're great chefs and they're very welcoming. In Colossians, it said this, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. So what does that mean? So let's take those one by one. Compassion. Compassion is not what I want, but what you want. Kindness is not what I want, but giving others what they want. Humility is not what I want, but putting others first. Gentleness is not what I want, but a softness of heart towards the other. Patience is not what I want, but waiting 
for the other. So do you get it? Not what I want, but seeking the benefit of the other. As a practical illustration, there's always the question of washing up. Who's going to do it? You've had dinner, you sat in front of TV watching Great British Bake Off or whatever your passion is, and the question is, who's going to do the dishes? And the point of the tea towel is, it's not about me, how can I help? It's about putting the other first. And if we're honest, in today's society, there's more of a culture of thinking of ourselves first. You read the newspapers, you see some of the politician statements, it's all about self rather than other. But marriage in a Christian setting turns that on its head. It's all about the other. Marriage says your job is to help the other flourish, to serve them, to seek the best for them. So Joanna, it's your job to bring out the best in Ting, and Ting, it's your job to bring out the best in Joanna. And God has trusted you to look after each other. You see things in the other person that no one else sees. You have the ability to limit the potential of the other person, but importantly, you have the ability to fulfill the other person's dreams. So on this talk of tea towel and serving, is love a passion or a path, or a passion or a path for my southern colleagues? As Yatting and Joanna learned on the really useful six-week marriage preparation course where we first met them, we tend to think of love as a passion. And there is something in that notion of love as a passion. But love that the Apostle Paul describes in the readings today is something different. So at the back of your service sheet, we have the passage from 1 Corinthians 13 on love. And just before that passage, Paul said, I will show you the most excellent way. I will show you the most excellent way, or in Greek, the most excellent path. Love is not just a passion. It's a path that you walk. It's a journey that you take. It's a way of life. And it's a journey that you're now called to walk together, hand in hand, in perfect unity. And this journey of unity is marked by service, hence the tea towel. David Wilkerson was an American Christian, best known for his book, The Cross and the Switchblade. In that book, Wilkerson talked about how love is a choice. He said this, love is not something you feel, it's something you do. And that's a tall order, but it's okay because we don't marry because we love, we marry also to learn to love. Marriage is a school of love. Which brings me to my second gift, which is even more extravagant. Colossians said, bear with one another and forgive each other. Bear with one another and forgive each other. So what have we got in here then? Curious? What we've got in here is a Tipex pen. It just keeps getting better. It's a Tipex pen. Colossians, bear with one another and forgive each other. You see, the truth is, no matter how nice you manage to be to each other, stuff creeps in. Stuff, mistakes, selfishness, thoughtlessness, the Bible calls it sin. Even the tea towel will need cleaning as it picks up dirt. And what Paul says is this. There's going to be chances to get angry and there's going to be things that you do wrong. And you have to find a way to deal with it. To put it another way, the best marriages are not staying resistant. The best marriages have a way to clean up the spills. The best marriages don't avoid the hard stuff. They work through the hard stuff together. So why the Tipex? Well, I loved Tipex at school. I'm from the era where we used to have bottles of Tipex. And I used to make a mistake, I used to rub it over, I used to make another mistake, I used to rub it over with a bottle of Tipex. To the point where I'd make a mistake deliberately so I could rub it out. And then I realized that the smell of correction fluid is addictive. In marriages, mistakes 
happen. That's why the Bible calls us to forgive. I could name for you several mistakes that my wonderful wife makes. <laughs> if only my wife, whom I love dearly, would respond to one of my texts occasionally. If only my wife, who I adore, would put her shoes away in the basket, which is one metre from the place on the floor that she likes to leave them in the hallway. If only my wife, who I love incredibly, would not keep telling me what I do wrong. These are the things that we are called to forgive, to put tipex over and to move beyond. And love is the tipex. Love covers a multitude of sins. The key is to find a way to use that tipex to forgive each other. Sam Keane said this, you come to love not by finding the perfect person, but by seeing an imperfect person perfectly. By seeing an imperfect person personally, perfectly. We're called to look at the positives of the other person. To think about what is admirable or praiseworthy, we read in Philippians. To catch your partner doing something good and to praise them, especially when you don't feel like it. In particular, people say, I can't forgive and forget. No, you can't. But you can forgive and remember differently. And you try to see the positives and to praise your partner for them. So Joanna and Ting, learn to serve using a tea towel and learn to forget using Tipex. Now the third gift is even more generous. If you thought my first two gifts were quite odd, my third gift actually comes in multiples. So it's, these are olive wooden hearts and I will take them back from you afterwards so you don't carry them throughout the service. I've got one for you and one for you. And so these wooden hearts are from Israel, a gift for you made in the Holy Land. And these wooden hearts are to help to remember that we all have a calling to love. And that calling is to Joanna, and it's to Ting, and it's to those people closest to them. And it's for the people who have a job today to remember that they've got a special job to do from here on in. So why a wooden heart? Why a wooden heart? So think about it. What we've read is probably one of the best descriptions of love ever written by anyone in any language. I pray first, which is why I wanted to give some hearts out to you as the congregation, that people here can learn and be deliberate about surrounding Joanna and Ting in love as they walk this journey together. I want to remind the parents particularly, and I've got another pair for, um, for Ting's parents too, but I want to remind the parents that you have a new job now too that you have to love your child in exactly the same way that you always have, but love them as man and wife. It's a new job. And this love comes from God. And this heart is to represent God's heart of love. So Paul wrote, wrote the verses that we heard read earlier. Where did Paul learn about love? Was Paul a roving Casanova with a burning heart? Was he a quietly devoted husband? No. Paul wrote these when he was a single man. So if love is learned, where did Paul learn love from? The love Paul knew came from knowing God. He was close to God, and God was close to him as a result. They were both close because of this thing called love. In Philippians it says, the Lord is near. And, and Paul is saying that he felt the Lord near to him and he felt that love personally. When we ask where does love come from, you can use something without knowing where it's come from. My bottle of mineral water says that it comes from some glamorous mountain somewhere, but I don't know where my tap water came, comes from. So we all use love in the same way that we use water. We fall in love we share love, we have loved ones, 
But do we know the source of that love? That God is the source of that love. My last point, in 1 John 4, 8, it says that God is love. The truth is that we were made to love by a God who is love. When we love, we glimpse what we're made for. That's why we feel so alive when we're in love, because it's what we were made for. And love lasts because God lasts. He'll be there in five years, he'll be there in 10 years, he'll be there in 100 years. And God is the source of love, and he'll be there for you. You just need to ask. And how did Paul know so much about God's love? Well, there was this man. One night, he took a towel. He wrapped it around his waist and washed his friend's feet. Like a servant. He said, this is how you should love. This is love. Jesus demonstrated the ultimate towel. And there was this man, the same man, who hung on a wooden cross, a cross of love and said, Father, forgive them because this forgiveness is love. This forgiveness, this blotting out the wrongs, the ultimate tipex. That's who Paul learnt it from, from Jesus. He's the one who shared the secrets of love. He walked in the path of love. That's how we know what love is, the ultimate heart. And that's the man whose story is in this book called the Bible. And he's the same man who's in the hearts of Joanna and Ting. And it's been such a privilege to get to know them and see that love demonstrated by the way that they interact with each other and with other people. Jesus is the one that we claim is alive today. He wants to get to know us and be part of our lives too. He wants to forgive us and give us the power to change whoever we are. It feels odd to give you a wooden heart, but the truth is that heart is demonstrating this source of love, which is God's heart. And if you want to know the truth behind the amazing passages that we read today, behind this church, behind this wedding, behind these two wonderful people, if there's something there that you want to know more about, just ask them. The answer lies in the name of Jesus. He's the embodiment of true love. He gave his all for us and he dwells in the hearts of Joanna and Ting. He can dwell in your hearts too. Just ask him. When we are given gifts, we have to decide if we really want them. Do you really want the tipex? Really? Do you really want the tea towel? <laughs> if you want real love, serving is the way to get it. If you want real love, forgiving is the way to keep it. And if you want real love, Jesus can help you find it. And as you build your life together, I hope you'll enjoy all the gifts today the gift of each other, the gift of friends, the gift of, of family, the gift of celebration. But most of all, I pray that you enjoy the gift of love. Amen. Shall we stand, please, to worship?
like to take a seat? Thank you. And if Joanna and Ting would just like to join me here. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, creator and redeemer, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, fill Joanna and Yating with the riches of your grace and breathe into their marriage the strength of your holy and life-giving spirit. Send upon them the gift of love that puts no limit to his faith and forbearance. So in their lives, the joy that comes from sharing and grows with giving. And if you join hands. Let peace spring from their faithfulness to each other and flow deeper with the passing years. Give them patience with their failures and persistence with their hopes. May their kindness born of a gracious heart be shown to others in a generous spirit. Let goodness flower with forgiveness and be the fruit of their married life. In gentleness, let them be tender with each other's dreams and healing of each other's words. Gracious God, accept our prayers for Joanna and Yating as their love ripens and their marriage matures, that they may reap the harvest of the Spirit. Rejoice in your gifts and reflect your glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, Joanna and Ting, together with their witnesses and parents, will be signing the register. And as they do, please allow yourself to be ministered to by this wonderful worship band. Please do remain in your seats. And those who are signing the register, please join me.
has wounds Who else has laid down that glory like you Who ever traded a crown for a cross We sing now forever that our God is love For our God is love This is my soul redemption This is our story Jesus, we come.